Welcome! This is part two of my tutorial on how to make a brotato like game in Unity. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend you check that out first. Now it's time to create our first enemy. Right click the hierarchy and create a new empty game object and call it enemy. Reset its position and double click on it to get there. Then open the sprites folder and drag and drop the snake sprite onto the scene. Create a new empty game object called sprites as a child of the enemy object. And drag the snake sprite as a child of the sprites object and call it body. Then drag the white snake sprite as a child of the body game object and set its opacity to zero. This white snake will only be visible when the snake gets hit. Add a rigid body 2D to the enemy game object and set the gravity scale to zero, angular drag to zero, and mass to 1000. Freeze rotation Z. Then give it a circle collider 2D as well. Now we can test our scene to see that the enemy is there, but it doesn't do anything. So let's make a new C sharp script called enemy. We remove the boilerplate code as always and let's start making some fields. We need a serialized field integer called max health and set it to 100. Then we need a serialized field float for speed that we set to 2. Then we need an integer for current health, an animator, a transform target to know what the enemy should follow. In our start method, we set current health to max health and assign the player as target and get component animator. We use gameobject.find to find the player in the scene. In the update method, we make sure that target is not null, and if so, we set the direction to target.position minus transform.position. And then we call direction.normalize. Then we set the transform.position to plus equals direction, time speed, times time dot delta time. This code will make the enemy move in the direction towards the player all the time. Then we create a new public void hit method that takes a damage integer as a parameter. If the snake gets hit, we subtract damage from current health and call set trigger hit on the animator. And if current health is less than or equals to zero, we destroy the game object. Now assign the enemy script to the enemy game object and start the game and we can see that he chases us around. Wonderful, isn't it? Increase the speed of the enemy to 4 if you're into more action. Now back in the player script that we made in the previous video, we can remove the test code from the update method and make the player get hit for real. In the onCollisionEnter2D method, we try to get the enemy component from the object we collide with. If enemy does not equals null, then we know it's an enemy we collided with. So we call hit and pass 20 damage. Now if we press play and collide with the enemy, we lose 20 health.
Now the enemy needs some animation. Select the enemy game object and the animations folder and press create in the animation window. Call the clip enemy idle. Since we did all this with the player, I will go a little faster now. Press the red record button, select the body sprite of the enemy, and after 0.10 seconds we make it smaller. Then we copy the first keyframes at 0 seconds and paste them at 0.20. Quick and simple animation. Now create a new clip for the hit animation called enemy hit. Press the red record button and select the hit sprite that is a child of enemy's body sprite. Set full opacity and after 0.20 seconds we set the opacity back to zero. Make sure order and layer is set to one on the hit sprite so it gets rendered in front of the snake. Select the animation enemy hit and turn off loop time. Now we will fix so the enemy looks towards the player, depending on if player is to the left or right of the enemy. In the enemy script, in the update method, we store a variable to check if player is to the right by checking the X position of the player compared to the X position of this enemy. Then we set transform local scale of the enemy and set the X of local scale to either one or negative one, depending on if player is to the right or not. Now we can see that the enemy flips correctly. And that's it for the second part of this tutorial. We made an enemy that chases us and hits us if we're too close. In our next part, we're cooking up the Enemy Manager script, the mastermind behind unleashing hordes of snakes. Don't forget to hit subscribe, or you might miss out on the villainous fun in our next video. Thanks for watching.